Arkansas. It is a big day in southern Arizona. The annual Tucson Rodeo Parade just hours away now. Floats are prepped. The horses are ready. And we're gearing up for another beautiful show for our city. Good morning. I'm Greg Godelé. And I'm Liz Kodalek in for Corinne. We started our morning with breaking news in South Tucson. Two fire departments were battling a blaze near 29th Street and 8th Avenue. We're told it's a vacant building formerly known as the formal, formerly known as the Independent Market. We're told investigators are now looking into the cause of that fire. And we're getting up for kickoff of the annual Tucson Rodeo Parade in just a few hours from right now. Not long, I tell you. Get ready for the big event. First up, April has our first warning weather. It is going to be a gorgeous day for anything outdoors, including the rodeo and match play. One of the coolest days of the week expected to happen today. Not cool, still above average, but cooler than what we've been. 47 is where we'll start the day through that 8 o'clock hour. We'll hit 70 by noon, 75 for the official high today. We'll talk more about your rodeo parade forecast, which kicks off at 9, coming up in just a few minutes. Big Al, how's it looking? April, pretty good. We've got all the stuff on the south side. We also have something going on on the northwest side this morning. It is right in the area of uh, actually this is the first thing I want to show you 29th Street closed between 7th and 10th Avenues this morning because of that fire so that is a big restriction also known as Silver Lake if you are on the west side of the freeway then to the northwest side we go up to Oracle and Ina Road got some big restrictions there starting at 7 o'clock with Oral Valley High Visibility Enforcement at Oracle and McGee, Oracle and Suffolk, and at Oracle and Ina Road. Here is the parade route this morning. It starts near the area of Golden Eagle Distributors right here at the railroad tracks on Ajo Way. And this is going east now on Ajo over to Park, down south on Park Avenue, way down south, about a mile or so down to Irvington Road. We take a right and head westbound along Irvington, right between Park Avenue and 6th Avenue, the rodeo grandstands and the rodeo grounds. Again, get there early. Starts at 9 o'clock. You should be in place no later than 8.30 this morning. That is the latest from the Beat the Traffic Center. Greg? Al, thank you. We'll take you live from the start of that Tucson Rodeo Parade in just a minute. But first, live look at the uh, look at the other big stories this morning. Second round of the Accenture match play tees off just a few hours. The Mountain at Marana. One of the top early matchups was Ricky Fowler and Ian Poulter. It was Fowler who came up with the big shots, upsetting the former match play champion. Fan favorite Bubba Watson also stays on for round two, defeating Miko Ilonen. And former University of Arizona golfer Jim Furyk was out there wearing Wildcat Red. He was a first round winner over Chris Kirk. Defending champion Matt Kircher and will face Ryan Moore in the second round. Rory McIlroy had an interesting day on the course. Check it out here. Shoot. Oh, God. I think that did that. That hit a cameraman right there? That hit somebody. His ball hit a fan, but all seemed to work out for McElroy. He ended up winning that round. See the cactus in that guy's back? Ouch. Yikes. Well, Team USA won three Olympic medals in Sochi yesterday, one in skiing, the other two in bobsledding, setting records in both events in the process. Check out Ted Ligeti's gold medal run. Ligeti, the disappointment four years ago in Vancouver, comes to the line in Sochi and finally has his giant slalom goal. Nice. The Nike World commercials were obviously right. This guy does not have time for a cold. Another U.S. <laughs> win for the record books and the women's bobsled, too. Lauren Williams, a sprinter who already has gold and silver from three Olympics, glided to victory with teammate Alana Myers to win the silver medal. And check us out. This is the first time the United States is on top with 23 medals, including seven gold. Host country Norway is first in the standings with 21 medals, and 10 of them are gold. Well, first it was toothpaste, now it's shoes. Officials are on alert this morning after more post sochi reports come out of travel threats. And a warning from the Department of Homeland Security to be on alert for explosives hidden in shoes. The department sent the warning to airlines asking them to take extra precautions. There are no specifics on just where that threat of the shoe bomber originated. Unrest in Ukraine is still growing this morning. Take a look at this. Whoa! 
Just unbelievable images from the streets of Kiev there. Yesterday, the country's president and protest leaders came to a truce, but clearly the bloodshed has not stopped. 28 people have died in the violent protests and 287 are injured. There are no specifics on what the truce entails just yet. The protesters are calling for the president to resign from office because he wants closer ties with Russia. They want to align the European Union with the United States instead. The Department of Homeland Security is dropping the idea of creating a national database of license plates. The idea was to bring an image of license plates scanned by speed cameras and store them. Now, officials thought it would help track undocumented immigrants, but it raised questions about privacy. Privacy advocates were concerned that innocent people would be caught in dragnets. The DHS issued a statement saying the solution which was posted without the awareness of ICE leadership has been canceled. Well, someone is waking up a millionaire this morning, and unfortunately, it's not one of us. At least one person hit the Powerball jackpot. A ticket sold in Santa Clara County, California, and it matched all of the numbers in Wednesday's drawing. And here they are, 17, 49, 54, 35, 1, and Powerball 34. Lottery officials are awaiting results from other jurisdictions, so more winners could be out there, maybe here in Tucson, maybe. The jackpot was estimated to be worth $425 million. I think somebody in Santa Clara County won the last one, too. Something tricky going on yeah. over there. I think. Mm. Oh, April, any luck on the lottery with you? Nope. <laughs> We've lucked out on this weather, though. That's I'm what... right here. Yes, and you're welcome. Uh, I'm going to tell you this. It is going to be so nice today, regardless of what you're doing outside, if you're heading out to the match play, if you're doing the rodeo parade, or even uh, going to the rodeo later today for the parade. Picture perfect. You may need a long sleeve just to start the day, maybe a jacket. 9 a.m. start time for that parade. We'll see low 50s, upper 50s through the 10 o'clock hour. It's going to warm up quickly, mid 60s within just a couple of hours. The parade usually ends somewhere between 11 and 11.30. Lots of sunshine today. One of the coolest days of the week, but still uh, very warm. Warm considering uh, this time of year and also considering uh, this time last year. Take a look at the snow capped mountains. That's what we were seeing on this day for the parade. This was just as the float uh, was getting ready. And yeah, we were seeing snow, two inches of snow. Our high that day was 52, which happened just after midnight. We haven't seen that amount of snow since 1976. Back over to you. All right, April, thank you. The roads will soon be packed with floats. Yes, they will be. The Tucson Rodeo Parade is one of Southern Arizona's biggest and longest running traditions, and it's back. It starts at 9 a.m. today. Thousands of people will line the streets this morning for the big event. Nine on your sides, Kristen Sorge is live on the south side with more. Kristen. Good morning, guys. Well, you said it. This is definitely going to be a big day for Tucson. Many people have the day off, and they will be out here enjoying the festivities taking place. So right now, we are joined by chairman of the parade, Bob Stewart. So, Bob, tell us a little bit. What is new this year? Well, we have several uh, interesting floats, oil tankers that they dragged all the way down here from Oregon, three of them that are part of the float, and one, and one of the uh, entries is going to be pulled by oxen, which is a little unusual. <laughs> we don't see many oxen out here. We see horses and donkeys, but <laughs> this is rare. Yes. So tell me a little bit, what does this parade, parade mean to Tucson, and how representative is it of our people here? Well, I think if they, we hit the numbers they're predicting today, 200,000 people on the parade route. It represents a major portion of the city of Tucson, plus the fact there's a tremendous amount of tourists that come here to see this parade. These are our winter visitors in many cases, but they're getting a taste of Tucson, a tradition that we go back 89 years. Right. Speaking of that 89 years, do you feel that this parade is losing its steam or luster? Well, it's pretty hard to look around out here and, and see any steam coming out anywhere that doesn't doesn't fit the app uh, going ahead program because, yeah, we're steam driven, but moving faster every year. <laughs> no, it's a, it's a good thing. It it just keeps on growing and growing, and there's a great deal of interest. And uh, this year we have more entries than we've had the last couple of years. I think the economy is shaping up a little bit better. And it's good to see people back in here that might have had to sit out a year or two just because of economic reasons. Thank you so much for your time this morning. We are looking forward to this. Guys, back to you. Looks fun. Thank you so much, Kristen. Tonight on Nine on Your Side at 10 o'clock, three women murdered just three years apart. And the killer 
or killers have never been caught. Linda Watson disappeared from her home back in 2000. Then her mother and neighbor were killed outside the same home in 2003. For 13 years now, Pima County Sheriff's Department's detectives have worked this case, scoring for clues. Nine on Your Side investigates this triple murder mystery tonight at 10 o'clock. Well, Stella's ahead and she's talking about the Confederate flag flying again in parts of the South where the Civil War banner is spurring anger over what it represents. And you might have them in your refrigerator. Maybe your kids are eating them at school. Hot pockets, triggering a government uproar and a recall over what's inside. It actually been, should have been thrown away. And we'll have a live look at your morning commute this morning. That's I-10 at Grant. Things are going well this morning at 638. Ready for the road ahead. It's an IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus. With 30 MPG and go anywhere capability, that's better fuel economy than Ford Edge or Jeep Grand Cherokee. The 2014 Subaru Outback. Love the road you're on. Subaru helps you maintain the love of your new Subaru with two years of complimentary maintenance on every new vehicle. Right now, get 0% APR financing on the 2014 Subaru Outback. Skycam is brought to you by Window World, simply the best for less. 641 right now, welcome back. You might want to check your freezer. The government has issued a recall for Philly steak and cheese hot pockets. Operations have been suspended at a California meat company. Food inspectors say the pockets could contain meat that the Department of Agriculture had already recalled. The meat company connected to the product is also connected to schools. It supplies beef for nearly 20% of federal school nutrition programs in California. And an old symbol is drumming up controversy again in the South. In this morning's talker, Stella Inger looks at a, how a Civil War era battle is now being refought over a license plate.
Good morning. The Confederate flag flies again in Georgia, sort of. This time it's on their state license plates and it's making a lot of people very upset there. The Sons of Confederate Veterans plate is a new design being offered to drivers who want to celebrate Southern heritage, but opponents of the symbol see it as a reminder of human slavery and segregation. The new tag comes nearly 12 years after the Confederate battle emblem was removed from the Georgia state flag. I'm Stella Inger. Hope you join Guy Ashley me tonight at 5, 6, and 10. You can join the conversation at kgun9.com, Facebook, and Twitter. Have a great day. All right, Stella, thank you. Beautiful weather for the Seriously. rodeo parade today. Couldn't be a better day for this. It's going to be one of the coolest days we've seen so far. We have clear skies out there. Mid-70s is what we're going to see for the high today. Picture perfect. We'll have details for your weekend forecast as well coming up. And bring in the clowns, if you can find them. Tough being funny. New report on how clowning around, well, this is the reason, is becoming less popular. And of course, you ask, we investigate. If you have something you want us to investigate, call 290-7726 or email us at news at kgun9.com. We do respond to all calls. Time right now is 643. Waterproof smartphone holder lets you listen to your playlist, check emails, all while sudsing up. Those are your tech bites. works. There's no obligation. One Reverse Mortgage is a Quicken Loans company. Their licensed experts can answer all your questions. Call to find out what a great solution this can be. Don't wait. Call now. Call 855-288-6031 to get your free quote. And when you call now, you'll also get a free lighted magnifier. Call 855-288-6031. Kega 9 on your side is brought to you by AvcoSolar.com. Now, K-Gun 9 on your side first warning weather with meteorologist April Madison. Welcome back. It is 646 sunny skies, mid 70s, picture perfect for the match play and rodeo today. Even the rodeo parade not going to be bad starting off in the low 50s as it starts around 9 o'clock. It only takes a few hours. We'll see uh, upper 50s through the 10 o'clock hour, mid 60s by about 1115. That's probably right around when it'll start wrapping up. But clear skies will prevail. Yesterday we saw mostly cloudy skies and that actually kept our winds down uh, and uh, it wasn't quite as significant as we thought it was going to be, which was good news, especially for match play. 
Clear skies today will mean sunny. We'll start the day right around 46, maybe 47. That still has a chance to go down before it goes up. Seven mile per hour winds at the surface. This is what we're looking at for the highs today. Mostly 70s across the board. All of these 70s, while the coolest we've seen for several days, still a good five to six degrees above where they should be. 69 is still the average, 30 year average for this time in Tucson. We will see 66 in Bisbee. Overnight lows will also be a little bit cooler than this morning thanks to the clear skies. We'll see a few 30s popping back up to the far southeast. Otherwise, 40s from about Green Valley, Tucson, westward, even 29 in Douglas. Here's a look at your seven day forecast. So 75 today, 76 for your Friday, holding on anywhere to around the mid to upper 70s uh, for the next couple of days. But we are going to see mostly cloudy skies over the weekend. As you can see, that's not going to do much to hinder our uh, forecast highs there. We're still going to see a warm up. That warm up will continue into the first part of next week. Looks like we'll hold on to anywhere from the upper 70s to low 80s there for uh, through the middle of next week. Back over to you. All right, April, thank you. And as she said, it's going to be a beautiful day for the rodeo, but there is a new reason to get your clown fix <laughs> ow, this year. Ow, yeah, ow. Yikes. <laughs> the U.S. appears to be experiencing a decline in its clown population. According to the World Clown Association, yes, that exists. Their membership has plummeted 30% over the last 10 years. They say it's because older clowns are hanging up their big floppy shoes and fewer people want to fill them. But there is no shortage of clowns at the Tucson Rodeo, so get your clown on people. And more backlash this morning from a controversial photo we showed you yesterday. The National Guard has suspended another soldier for defending this picture taken at a training exercise. The caption was, we put the fun in funeral. The guardsman said the soldier who was initially suspended for posting this on social media was not disrespecting anyone. The practice sessions are long and he said it's good to just let loose. The coffin was empty, but it's a controversy that it's the lots of our viewers talking this morning. The story has been number one on our website since we posted it yesterday in the morning, and our Facebook page is lit up with comments. Now, most of our viewers call the uh, com comment and uh, photo disrespectful. This is our GMT topic of the day for you. Join the conversation. Training casket or not, is this disrespectful? We want to hear from you. Leave your thoughts on our Facebook page. The NBA's newest recruit proves that a big heart will get you very far. This teen won the world over in a virtual a viral video, and now he's playing on the court with the 76ers. And we have a live last look at your morning commute before you head out the door. This is I-10 and Speedway. Time right now is 6.50.
Makes every day a scream. Next, Ellen, David Spade. Plus, Kim Douglas gets Ellen ready for the Oscars. You got some on your nose. Yeah, I know. Just kidding. You have some here. I do. Oh. Oh. Today at 4 on K-Gun 9 on your side. I accidentally locked my keys in my truck while stopping at Dunkin' Donuts. So now I'm sitting in the bed of my truck, sipping a latte and smiling. Hashtag my Dunkin'. Enjoy a delicious latte the next time you stop at Dunkin'. Share your story. Hashtag my Dunkin'. 6.53 right now. Welcome back. It's been a busy day here in southern Arizona. The Amber Alert we broke to you in the 5 o'clock hour has been canceled. The mother has turned herself in and the children are thankfully safe. And we start our morning with breaking news in South Tucson. Two fire departments were battling a blaze near 29th Street and 8th Avenue. We told you this is a, a vacant building. There were no injuries. Investigators are now looking into the cause of the fire there. And happening today also, thousands of people will line the streets for the annual Tucson Rodeo Parade. This, of course, is one of our city's biggest events of the year. Lots of people have the day off of work and of school just to be out today for that parade. And you can catch the start of the parade at 9 a.m. on Ajo, just west of Park. Not on your side will be live at the Rodeo Parade around 8.55 during a GMA cut-in. And you can catch a recap tonight at 5, 6, and 10. Big Al, there's some road restrictions starting in a couple minutes, right? Right. Everything on the Rodeo Parade route will close except for westbound Irvington. And that's to allow those of you that want to get a grandstand seat which tickets are still available, I'm told, that will get you into westbound Irvington and the rodeo grounds. Here's where it starts, at Park and Fair, heads east on Park. Now we're turning south on Park Avenue, down toward Irvington Road. It's a long stretch. This is the biggest stretch of the parade route itself. Take a right turn. Now we're heading west on Irvington. Back over to right there are the grandstand seats and the rodeo parade grounds right there. Of course, we have the rodeo as well this afternoon, but the parade is the big deal. They expect around 200,000. Estimates in the wow. past years have said that it's a little less than that, like maybe a lot less, but I got to tell you, it is a fun time. You got to take the kids. yippee ki -yay, April Madison. <laughs> you know, I, my I horse wore seat. the tie just for you, buddy. I know. Get just there no later you. than 815. Don't bring any noisemakers and no sitting on the bus shelters, Greg. Oh, yeah, man. Greg. I like yeah, Greg. Yeah, Greg. Uh, it's going to be gorgeous weather for this rodeo parade for match play. One of the coolest days we've seen uh, so far in February. 75 for today. Lots of sunshine. We'll see some clouds over the weekend, but certainly not going to hinder the warm up that we're going to see into the weekend as well. Big difference from this time last year, we were seeing snow and rain. So yes. I think we'll take this weather. Thank you. Yes, we will, April. Well, before we go, we want to share our favorite story of the day with you. You guys might remember this went viral. Yeah. This little boy, uh, he, thro he threw a three-pointer at a, a basketball game. Uh, so meet now the new breakout star of the 76ers. He is already a fan favorite and the center of the team huddle. His name is Kevin Groh. Before he was a free agent, the 18-year-old with Down syndrome was the manager of the Ben Salem High School basketball team. And with two minutes remaining in the final game of the season, Kevin's coach took him off the bench and put him in the game. He scored four three-pointers, knocking in a buzzer beater even. After the play went viral, the pros came calling. The Sixers signed Kevin to a ceremonial two-day contract wow. with the team. Isn't he cute? That is awesome. And look at his skills. Yes. It's incredible. I want him to coach me. <laughs> <laughs> and the Sixers look, can use them this I'm year, too, horrible. I tell you. Oh, are they bad? <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're they're bad. Bad. Look at that. He just another come on. three right there. <laughs> that Bada bing. Is amazing. Wait, that's very good. good. They're like, oh, watch, wait for There's it. There's another wait one. one. Oh, there we go. Oh, hey, nothing but net. I don't know. The Suns are looking for players, too, I think. Maybe yeah. I'm Two day, yeah. two year, buddy. Yeah, yeah seriously. Boom. Your contract. <laughs> Boom is Boom. right. Boom. Mm -hmm. Right in. Two points. Three Real points. quick, there I just go. want to tell you, if you want to park for free, and there are lots of free parking spaces, you can pay $5 to park at the rodeo grounds at Irvington and Six. But if you want to park for free, the best spots that I've found over 20 years of doing this are south of Irvington and east. Of, uh, of Park Avenue. Those are the spots that you can get close in. You can get right as the parade turns oh. from Park and heads west on Ajo Way. Great places to park. Get there no later than 815, though, for those spots. So yeah, leave right after today the with cast, the gorgeous huh? weather. We'll leave right after the newscast. <laughs> now, you can go. All right, now. bye. Enjoy the <laughs> parade. We'll see you tomorrow. Hey. <laughs> Whoa!
five, four years ago in Vancouver. Comes to the line at Sochi and finally has his giant slalom goal. Nice. The Nyquil commercials were obviously right. This guy does not have time for a cold. Another U.S. <laughs> win for the record books and the women's bobsled, too. Lauren Williams, a sprinter who already has gold and silver from three Olympics, glided to victory with teammate Alana Myers to win the silver medal. And check us out. This is the first time the United States is on top with 23 medals, including seven gold. Host country Norway is first in the standings with 21 medals, and 10 of them are gold. Well, first it was toothpaste, now it's shoes. Officials are on alert this morning after more post sochi reports come out of travel threats. Add a warning from the Department of Homeland Security to be on alert for explosives hidden in shoes. The department sent the warning to airlines asking them to take extra precautions. There are no specifics on just where that threat of the shoe bomber originated. Look at April pretty good. We've got all the stuff on the south side. We also have something going on on the northwest side this morning. It is right in the area of, uh, actually, this is the first thing I want to show you. 29th Street closed between 7th and 10th Avenues this morning because of that fire. So that is a big restriction. Also notice Silver Lake if you are on the west side of the freeway. Then to the northwest side we go up to Oracle and Ina Road. Got some big restrictions there starting at 7 o'clock with Oral Valley High Visibility Enforcement at Oracle and McGee, Oracle and Suffolk, and at Oracle and Ina Road. Here is the parade route this morning. It starts near the area of Golden Eagle Distributors right here at the railroad tracks on Ajo Way. And this is going east now on Ajo over to Park, down south on Park Avenue, way down south, about a mile or so down to Irvington Road. We take a right and head westbound along Irvington, right between Park Avenue and 6th Avenue, the rodeo grandstands and the rodeo grounds. Again, get there early. Starts at 9 o'clock. You should be in place no later than 8.30 this morning. That is the latest from the Beat the Traffic Center. Greg? Al, thank you. We'll take you live from the start of that Tucson Rodeo Parade. Just a minute. But first, live look at the... Uh, look at the Good morning, Tucson. It is a big day in southern Arizona. The annual Tucson Rodeo Parade just hours away now. Floats are prepped. The horses are ready. And we're gearing up for another beautiful show for our city. Good morning. I'm Greg Godule. And I'm Liz Kodalek in for Corinne. We started our morning with breaking news in South Tucson. Two fire departments were battling a blaze near 29th Street and 8th Avenue. We're told it's a vacant building formerly known as the formal, formerly known as the Independent Market. We're told investigators are now looking into the cause of that fire. And we're gearing up for kickoff of the annual Tucson Rodeo Parade in just a few hours from right now. Not long, I tell you. Get ready for the big event. First up, April has our first warning weather. It is going to be a gorgeous day for anything outdoors, including the rodeo and match play. One of the coolest days of the week expected to happen today. Not cool, still above average, but cooler than what we've been. 47 is where we'll start the day through that 8 o'clock hour. We'll hit 70 by noon, 75 for the official high today. We'll talk more about your rodeo parade forecast, which kicks off at 9, coming up in just a few minutes. Big Al, how's it? Unrest in Ukraine is still growing this morning. Take a look at this. <laughs> Just unbelievable images from the streets of Kiev there. Yesterday, the country's president and protest leaders came to a truce, but clearly the bloodshed has not stopped. 28 people have died in the violent protests and 287 are injured. There are no specifics on what the truce entails just yet. The protesters are calling for the president to resign from office because he wants closer ties with Russia. They want to align the European Union with the United States instead. The Department of Homeland Security is dropping the idea of creating a national database of license plates. The idea was to bring an image of license plates scanned by speed cameras and store them. Now, officials thought it would help track undocumented immigrants, but it raised questions about privacy. Privacy advocates were concerned that innocent people would be caught in dragnets. The DHS issued a statement saying the solution, which was posted without the awareness of ICE leadership, has been canceled. Well, someone is waking up a millionaire this morning. And Other big stories this morning. Second round of the Accenture match play tees off just a few hours. The Mountain at Marana. One of the top early matchups was Ricky Fowler and Ian Poulter. It was Fowler who came up with the big shots, upsetting the former match play champion. Fan favorite Bubba Watson also stays on for round two, defeating Miko Ilonen and former University of Arizona golfer Jim Furyk. 
was out there wearing Wildcat red. He was the first round winner over Chris Kirk. Defending champion Matt Kircher and will face Ryan Moore in the second round. Rory McIlroy had an interesting day on the course. Check it out here. Shoot. Oh, God. I think that did that. That hit a cameraman right there? That hit somebody. His ball hit a fan, but all seemed to work out for McElroy. He ended up winning that round. See the cactus in that guy's back? Ouch. Yikes. Well, Team USA won three Olympic medals in Sochi yesterday, one in skiing, the other two in bobsledding, setting records in both events in the process. Check out Ted Ligeti's gold medal run. Ligeti, the discipline.